Welcome to Juniper KBTV SSL VPN. In this video, I will demonstrate how to configure an LDAP server instance on the Juniper SA for existing Active Directory user authentication. I'll complete this task in two steps. The first step will be to create an LDAP authentication server instance to authenticate Active Directory users to the Juniper SA. And the second step will be to confirm that the Active Directory groups are retrievable from the LDAP server instance. To define an LDAP server instance, go to Authentication, Auth Servers, choose LDAP Server from the drop-down list, and click New Server. Specify a name to identify the server instance. In my case, I'm just going to use the domain name of my Active Directory. And specify the LDAP Server hostname or IP address. Specify the port on which the LDAP server listens. This port is typically 389 when using an unencrypted connection and 636 when using SSL. Next, you'll want to specify the parameters for backup LDAP servers. Now, this is optional. However, if you do have backup LDAP servers, the Secure Access Service will use the specified servers for failover processing. Each authentication request is first routed to the primary LDAP server and then to specified backup servers if the primary server is unreachable. I should note here that the backup servers must be the same version as the primary LDAP server and also we do recommend that you specify the IP address of a backup server instead of its hostname which may accelerate failover processing by eliminating the need to resolve the hostname to an IP address. Next we'll specify the LDAP server type. In my case Active Directory is the server type I'll be using and I'll choose connection as unencrypted. The connection timeout will specify how long you want Secure Access Service to wait for a connection to the primary LDAP server first and then each backup LDAP server in turn. And for the search timeout, this specifies how long you, you'll want the Secure Access Service to wait for search results from a connected LDAP server. Next, if we click Test Connection, we can verify that the Juniper SA can connect to the LDAP server. The message I see is LDAP server is reachable, which is good. That, that, that means that the Juniper SA is reachable to the LDAP server and vice versa. If you get anything different here, a communication error or any type of error, you'll want to, you'll want to work out the connection problems before continuing on. Next, in order to use password management or to search for users in Active Directory, you'll want to enable the authentication required to search LDAP checkbox and provide the admin DN. And the admin DN should be the admin account that has enough permissions and rights to perform these functions. Next, on specifying how to find a user entry, you'll want to define the base DN from which user entries can be found. In my example, I'll just use the domain as the base DN with a filter of SAM account name equals username, which is most common to Active Directory catalogs. Next, under determining group membership, this can usually be the same DN as you specified above for the user entries and specify the filter as CN equals group name. The member attribute, in my case, will be member. Uh, it's most commonly the, the member attribute used in Active Directory. Next, the reverse group search option will basically search for users starting from the member instead of the group. This option is only available for Active Directory server types. The next query attribute is the attribute used to determine members of a dynamic group. So the member attribute is for static, query attribute is for dynamic. If you don't have dynamic groups, you can leave this blank. And nested group level is for the maximum depth of nested groups. And then the nested group search defines how to uh, search for nested groups, whether you want to search in Silver Catalog or search in all nested groups. Go ahead and save changes. And if there are no errors in your configuration, you'll see the output of save changes successfully in your LDAP server instance. If you see any errors here besides the successful output of save changes successfully, you'll want to resolve those errors before moving on. 
To verify that your LDAP server can now retrieve groups from your Active Directory domain controller, click Server Catalog and click Search. Once you verify that you are seeing all of the Active Directory groups you're expecting to see from your LDAP server, this verifies that your LDAP server configuration is correct. And that completes this demo. Thanks for watching.